。先生，我试下练下羽毛。你讲粗口。Hi everyone and welcome to my simple guide on how to choose a hood and a hawk for your new home. Now, before you say that this is a clickbait video or a video to cheat your watch time, I'm going to put up the summary right here so that you can have a look before you jump into the video. Now, if you understood the summary and think that you don't need to continue with this video, please go ahead and watch something else right now. But if you feel like joining me, I'm going to explain a bit on how we came to this video. So, I was shopping around for a new hood and hop for my new home. And I noticed something. Hood and hops do not have general knowledge to them. For example, if I want to buy an aircon, I can just aga aga know. Hey, I want a one horsepower, one point five horsepower. But nobody ever explained to me how to pick a hood and hop. So it was very difficult. Hops can go from two hundred ringgit all the way to three, four thousand ringgit. Same thing for the hoods. So being someone who does not know this area. It is best to ask an expert, and who's the expert? The expert will be the salesperson who's selling these things. So I went to the expert, and you know what the expert told me? Hello, sir. You choose this brand. This brand very good one. One point five horsepower. You see, the paper won't fall down. One. Uh, how much the price? Ah, uh? this one. I need so powerful or not? Uh, I mean, it's quite expensive. Ah, uh. no, sir. This one good. Ah, uh. all oh, everything can suck. You know, all your gas, all your oil, all will suck inside. Suck very strong. One point three horsepower to suck everything. Ah, uh, good, good, good. You go and suck your mother. So generally, all conversations with salesmen actually went like that. So in the end, I've decided to go back and do my own research on how to pick a hood and a hawk. So the first thing that everyone needs to know when we are buying all these expensive things is to set a budget. But since I don't know what I need and I don't know how much is the thing I need, how do I set a budget? So this is how I did it in the end. I went on the internet and I searched for some information and I've summarized it in a simplified way for you to watch. Now before you continue, if you think that this will be useful for you, please like below. And also if you feel free, please subscribe to this. Maybe I will make more videos in the future. Choosing a hob is actually very easy. Back in those days, everyone had a wet kitchen or a yard outside where they can cook, uh, without worrying about ventilation. But nowadays, since we are a lot of, uh, since we have a lot of people who extend their kitchen out to the yard for some reason, or do not have a proper ventilation. For example, you live in a studio or you stay in a condominium, it becomes an issue. Then you will think, ah, yeah, maybe I should get an electrical one, an electrical stove or electrical hobs are better. So what are the considerations here between gas and electricity? It's actually very simple. It's either one of these two. Pricing wise, gas is obviously cheaper. But of course, you have to buy the gas tong, and then every month you have to change, or whenever you need new gas, you have to buy. So that's a the cost there. Electrical stoves are generally more expensive, way more expensive, five times the price. Uh, but they use your electricity, so you don't worry about not having gas. A major issue with electrical stove is the feel, especially to the Chinese people. Tin low, mo or pay, because you cannot control the flames. Uh, you cannot control how hot it gets, and then you cannot do the very nice tossing feel. Okay, so this is one thing that you may want to consider using electrical stove. No feel. For gas stoves, it is very simple. All you need to do is make sure you have the gas tong, okay? Or you can get gas from pipes if your condo or studios have it. However, for electrical stoves, you cannot simply use any normal power point, okay? You need to make sure that your power plug is powerful enough to support your hob. So talk to your electrician or your contractors to make sure that the point you're going to use is powerful enough to support it. So for gas stove, it's actually very simple. There's only two types. Sui ka bo sui nya. You choose lah which one you think is nice and you put lah whatever you want to put. So for electrical stove, there's two types. One is the ceramic and the other one is the induction. Both burners have their own pros and cons. For the ceramic one, you can use any types of pots and pans on it because it gives direct heat towards the pots and pans that you're going to use. You can use your mother's clay pot, you can use your own uh, metal wok, no problem. However, for the electrical stove that uses the induction burner, that one is a bit more uh, expensive, uh, but it has a 
they say there is a better uh, savings for the long term because it uses less electricity. However, for this, you can only use induction friendly cookware, usually made of steel. So if you want to use all your mother, you know, got taste, taste better one, you cook those old things, you may want to consider a ceramic burner. But outside, of course, there is a combo burner where you can have one ceramic and one induction on the same hood. That will cost different, lah, of course. A final consideration for you is the size. How many people are you cooking for? You know, some people have to cook at one time four, five pots of things, lah, so you need a bigger hob so they can cook different pots at the same time. But if you're just cooking for uh, your, your, a small family of two or three and you want to cook for yourself only, all you need is maybe one or two uh, burners. So generally, the more burners you have, the more expensive it is. So that's it for the hob. Very simple, either gas or electric. And then depending on how many you want to cook for and also what type of cookware you use, select whichever. And then after that, you can go and find the... Uh, the thing that fits into your budget already. The only issue that you might uh, face is you know between ceramic and induction. I highly recommend ceramic because people who cook in Malaysia usually use different types of uh, pots and pans. Uh, but of course, uh, the price will vary based on the burner you have. So take into consideration how many things you want to cook at one time. Next, we go to the hood. Now this one is the difficult one. There's so much different brands out there and such a big difference in the price range. Which one should you pick? Here is where more salesmen will tell you, pick this one, ah. this one can suck very well. That is not the main point. So how do you pick a good hood for yourself and it fits your needs without going over budget or being more expensive than what you should pay for? Very simple. First one, you select the... The first step is to understand your house and also what type of rules govern your house. Because some studios, some condos do not allow you to spray or got no place for you to spray your dirty air outside. So with that, you can only choose the recirculatory uh, hoods where they recirculate the air within your home. Now, if your house or your studio or your condo has places or you know channels for you to shoot and spray all the dirty air outside, then you can consider the ducted exhaust. You know, when you see a lot of uh, tubes that channel the air outside uh, so that you can have a clean kitchen, that is what they do. Now, the difference between these two is very simple. Recirculated air actually just filters the air and keeps the air inside your house while the ducted exhaust draws air from your kitchen and throw it outside. With this, you can actually see already the recirculated uh, hoods are generally very much cheaper than the exhaust uh, ducted ones. Next is about the filters. Now, if you use a recirculated method, you have no choice. You can only use the charcoal filter. That's why you, when you go outside and you listen to all the salesmen, they tell you, oh, this one is charcoal filter, charcoal filter. It's basically the filter that they use to clean the air before spraying it out again in your house. This method is a bit cheaper, but you have to keep in mind when do I need to change the filter. And uh, every time you change the filter, it will cost some money. However, the cost of the filter is actually very low only. You can buy for yourself uh, on the internet for a couple tea bucks and you can change it yourself. As for the ducted exhaust one, this is where you see a very difference in price. Usually recirculated with the filter hoods are very cheap compared to these exhaust ducted ones. So in exhaust ducted pipes, there is two type of filters that they use. The first type is the mesh filter. Now the mesh filter is very simple. It's just a lot of different wires put together and air goes through this mesh before being channeled outside as cleaner air to be sprayed outside. So what happens with these mesh filters is you will take a bit more time in cleaning them. They usually recommend that you wash these uh, mesh filters uh, once a week because that's where the oil is trapped. It's all on the mesh. So clean it more often. However, the price for mesh filters uh, and also the uh, hoods that use mesh filters are generally cheaper than the next one. Right, next one is the baffle filter. The baffle filter basically is a set of metal blades or baffles that filters your air, but then it channels all the oil that is collected into a certain cup, which you can then remove and just clean the cup. 
and then you're good to go. So maintenance wise, there is less work because all you need to do is wash the cup maybe once a week, once a month, or when you see that it's a bit full, you can clean it already. As for the baffle, maybe once a year you service it, uh, but with a bit of cleaning and that's it. However, the baffle filter is usually way more expensive. Last and the most important thing to consider when choosing your hood is how much it can suck. How hard it can suck, how powerful it is. When you go outside to the shops, they always tell you, oh, get this one, uh, 1.3 horsepower can suck very well one. Actually, how much do you need? Do you really need 1.3 horsepower? And is the measurement actually 1.3 horsepower? Now, I'm going to give you a general guideline and you can have a standard to see whether you need to pay that much for the hood or not. Common sense will tell you, the more powerful the hood is, the more expensive it will be. So most salesmen that I've met will always tell me that, hey, this one is how many horsepower, this is how many horsepower. Actually, the measurement for a hood is, the power of a hood is not by horsepower. It is by cubic meters per hour, meaning how much air in cubic meters is sucked out of your kitchen every hour. So your question now is, how powerful then should my hood be? There's a lot of different measurements and from the most simple guide that I have from the internet, it says this. For every 30.5 centimeters you have of your hob, okay, you times that by 170 cubic meters per hour. Meaning generally, right, for your hobs that have two cookers, you don't need more than 500 cubic meters per hour. Okay, unless of course you are looking at you know, your hood or it's very big, or your kitchen is very big, or you're cooking a lot of stir fry, a lot of uh, frying frying where all flies and splatters everywhere, uh, then that will be a different story. You may need a bit more powerful. But generally, this is a good guideline. Generally, the market now sells very little of these low-powered hoods. Last time, got a lot. Okay, uh, In fact, when I go and check out certain brand that I mentioned just now, uh, the website uh, for their products, they used to have all these uh, low-powered hoods. But now, not so much anymore. Now, minimum they sell is a, like 1,250 cubic uh, meters per hour. And I think that will be enough for you already. Choose the lowest one if you're only using a very small uh, burner. Of course, take into consideration how far your hood and your hop is. Okay, But generally, use the guideline I've given you. And if you are just using a two burner, you don't need so much. Why waste the money? And that is the most important point in choosing your hood. The price will change a lot depending on all these three factors. Choose one that fits you. If you think that you don't cook so much or you cook you know, not so oily stuff, go with the cheaper ones. But if you think that you'll be cooking a lot, use the more expensive ones. Final thing that I think you should think about is the brand. Lah. Okay, uh, Different hoods and hops from different brands can have different pricing even though the specifications can be the same however generally you can see prices uh, of brands from china is usually way cheaper quality wise i don't know but there's a lot of developers that are giving out all these uh, uh, cheaper china brands for free in your house so i mean if you're looking for good quality stuff and you look at brands, uh, usually those uh, established American or European brands or Japanese brands, uh, they will cost a bit more. Okay, with everything I said put together, how much should your budget for your hood and hob be? If your choice is a gas stove or a gas hob, anything more than a thousand ringgit inclusive of the hood, uh, would be okay you know uh, you can go for something below a thousand ringgit uh, there's a lot of promotions going on you can get some for 800 900 for the full set if you're getting something more than that you know up to 2000 ringgit uh, you are looking to cook for more people uh, okay uh, this will be more suitable for family of four or five and you cook a lot of frying frying stuff and the main cost will be on the hood itself and anything more than 3000 ringgit well, you better be a damn well cook for the cooks for a lot of people like, if you're spending that much for a gas stove and a hood. As for the electric hops and also hood, well, those set will set you back uh, a bit more expensive. If you're using a very basic one, 2,000 ringgit and below uh, would be a good deal. Uh, you can look at some maybe 1,006 to 2,000 would be an entry level cooking for two people. Uh, up to 2,000 ringgit, 
would also be a normal one. This one is considering if you're using the baffle type of filters. Uh, usually if you go for mesh filters, it will be way cheaper, but there's a lot more at, uh, maintenance because you need to clean the mesh. Uh, 3000 ringgit makes sense if you're using a very good uh, dual burner, okay? And also a very good uh, brand uh, hood with a uh, sufficient uh, 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 power in it. And most importantly, if you are using more than 4,000 ringgit, again, I say, you better be a damn well cook. So basically, that's it for my simple guide to choosing a hood and a hob. I hope I've made this simple for you so you didn't think of so, so many things. At the same time, don't go so technical. Okay. If you think that this video has helped you, please uh, like and share this uh, video to your friends uh, who might be interested in buying a new hood and a hob. And if you think that I have said anything wrong and you think there is need for clarifications, uh, comment below. If you'd like to see me make more videos where I do research into things that you don't really do research on, click on the subscribe button. Alright, if I get maybe 200 views, uh, 10 shares and 10 subscribers to this video, I will make another video uh, on another topic. Maybe you can suggest a topic for me in the comments below. But if I don't reach the numbers, well... So I was shopping around for a new hood and hop, and then after that, ugh. Meaning, let's say if I have a twenty, oh, the horsepower are very high. You see, the water, the the water pula. One point three horsepower. You see, the water, the water, the paper.